This is the Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the Pit Stop, where you, the pit crew, you are the real star of today's show. I hope everything's working. I have been having nothing but problems, and I am getting closer and closer, closer and closer to pointing a finger at YouTube. Because when I turn on Twitch, I see that everything works just fine on time. Streams just like I want. YouTube isn't picking up the stream. Um, again, I've been having very strange internet troubles this week where I do a speed test and everything is 100% great. I'm getting my full capacity and then yet I'm still having trouble with various different sites around the internet. Don't know if this is just me. Don't know if it's a big giant internet thing. Are we under attack? Who knows? And what are they not telling us is what I'm wondering. Um, but it is starting to, to, to actually affect my ability to do the show. It, it gives me a rough start. When I hit go and it doesn't go, it's hard for me to keep my composure and not become just uh, completely uh, disorientated or confused or upset about things. But anyway, happy hump day. I see somebody had asked what shirt. Old school. I don't know if you can tell how nasty this shirt, like it's actually all the letters are coming off or wrinkling or cracking. Um... So I am just doing old school for today's hump day. What about you? What are you wearing on this beautiful hump day? Mike, 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 Mike. What? Guess what day it is. So what is going on in sim racing? Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the show and just hanging out. Talk sim racing every day. One of my favorite things to do. I love doing this show because it keeps me in the loop. It keeps me on the forefront of what's going on in sim racing. And I, I tend, I you know... Just to know me, I tend to get tunnel vision, and if I have a project on my plate, I just, I'm, I'm in that project, and I don't think about anything else. The pit stop is one of those things that helps me stay in tune with the world of sim racing. Hopefully, it does the same for you, and it allows me to get feedback from you guys in the most direct way, because if I'm driving or doing other streams, it's really hard for me to pay attention to the chat while doing that. However, with the pit stop, I get to talk with you guys, just talk sim racing, which, again, one of my favorite things to do. So what is going on? Um, World of Outlaws, you know, this this eSport side of things is really heating up on the iRacing things, and Alex Bergeron is just, this guy is so awesome. Uh, third World of Outlaws late model winner in three weeks, takes the point lead in Knoxville. So he is our uh, season points leaders leader with that win uh good for him and more and more entertainment i didn't get a chance to watch this week's race but and the points would show you you know imply the same thing 219 versus 216 for blake cannon in second evan ca evan ca in third with 203 and blake Majolis with 200 points you can see a real only 19 points between first and fourth place which shows you how tight things have been I wish I'd seen this race because all the other ones that I've watched have been quite entertaining, and we've talked about that. Uh, maybe Billy will have watched it and give us a little more information on Friday about uh, that that race and how it played out. Um, yep, tomorrow night. Yes, tomorrow night is the GT3 race. Uh, Sean, Pro Sim, uh, TNT, he's been streaming our races. Um, I need to talk to you about restreaming that to our channel as well sean uh make hendrick happy anyway tomorrow night that'll be uh, a set of course on sim racing systems in the gt3s in addition to that uh this is the first and i'm going to hit play on the video this is iRacing's twitter page e nascar peak series and this is the first gwc green white checker took me a little while to figure out what gwc was finally did green white checkered in the e nascar peak series and Novak gets his third win of the season for Roush Fenway Racing in this little uh, two-lap battle. Green, white, checkered. Green, white, checkered. Yes, that would be two laps. Izzy, I am having a really hard time with YouTube right now. I don't know what you guys, how it's working for you guys over there, but I use Restream to go YouTube and Twitch simultaneously. And for this whole week, it seems, when I hit go... It goes live on Twitch, but then doesn't go live on YouTube, uh, and and I, I don't know what's going on there, but it's been a little upsetting. Um, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> All right, anyway, so that was a green-white checkered first time ever. Um, let's see, they take the green, 
that would be one lap. They take the white, and then at the completion of that is the checkered. So I think that's two laps. Um, R factor. So we talked about the R factor big event. Uh, you know, Team Redline was going to be there. I know Mitchie Hoyer was going to be racing in that race. A lot of big, big names. Jack Keatley was going to be in that race. Uh, this was going to be at Le Mans 24, or was at Le Mans 24-hour race for the 6th and 7th of July. And they had huge server issues and problems, and they actually red flagged, red flagged the event. Stopped it mid-race and said that's going to be... Uh, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So they've been very apologetic, and now they have an official statement about the technical issues that went on. And more important than that, what I really liked about R Factor's approach to this is right from the beginning, they're like, hey, something was wrong. We're going to look into it. We're going to address it and do our best to fix it. I mean, like, is, is it forward and, and, and attacking the problem as you could possibly be and very upfront, apologetic, and honest. So um, they are 100% committed and passionate about our factor. We fully dedicated to bring an excellent experience to our users. Uh, so they've created a task force to work out a solution from what went wrong. Their work will include everything from gathering info, data, logs, and participants to work out the source of these problems and then ultimately solving these issues. It is a priority for us as endurance racing is a core aspect of the game. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Uh, Joshua, anybody can reach out to me for anything at Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com. I am slow about email, but I do try to answer every email I get. Um... Yeah, Devin, great point. Or you could join our patron group and get instant access to me and, and many of our others who, many of these guys, you know. One thing I'll say, you could make the argument that I am a jack of all trades here at the Sim Pit because I test and use a variety of equipment and that you will probably find somebody who is more knowledgeable about an individual product if that's like their dedicated product and the one they use because they've done everything uh, uh, to dial it in. They know it intimately. Um, it's harder for me to get that kind of a, a foundation. So yeah, if you want, like, you're talking sim rigs, you know, I've tested a bunch of them and I use them, but you might be able to find somebody in our, in our patron group who's like using that rig today and could give you firsthand, uh, opinion as well. Yeah, we have lots of opinions, some good, some bad, some are just opinions. Um, in addition to that, our factor two, the final day of the summer sale is today. So if you haven't yet, if you want to try out those tattoos, open wheeled cars, you want to try out the, uh, really beautiful version of Sebring, it's going to be the end of the sale. So if you want to do it on the cheap, you better get to it. <coughs> um, <laughs> Rubbing butter on my bald head. Is that what we're going to do for, for 50,000 subs? Uh, we're going to bake Sean's head. All right, all right. Was it the end of yesterday? I thought that was posted. Oh, you know what? That was posted on the 9th. You're right. I had my days wrong. That was yesterday. Thank you very much, Brad. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I even saw the date in my head. I just forgot that today was the 10th. Forgive me. Uh, the, the sale is over. Oh my God. The, the sale is over. Too bad. So sad. If you didn't buy it, you've been warned. I mentioned it probably six times since the stale, sale went on and felt like the tattoos required zero braking as long as you could turn the wheel. It never spun out. Yes. Very grippy, but there are, there are a selection of cars. So that the case in your experience from all of them, but they are, um, and, and, one thing about once you get below Formula One, you're talking about cars that have so much mechanical grip, so much uh, rubber grip because of the size of the tires, uh, so much aerodynamic downforce grip multiplying all those other things. And then you have horsepower that is really relatively tame for how much car that is as far as performance goes. So that, that is one thing about lower level open wheeled racing in the modern era. Um, if you think, of, you know, and I, we're going to get a little off topic, but I really don't care. Uh, as long as you guys are entertained, I really don't care what kind of diversions we take. But, 
you know, back when I used to race in the, the Russell, uh, the Star Mazda, you know, it had a front wing and a rear wing that did almost zero. And then you look at the modern version of that car, which is a full carbon monocoque chassis. And then on top of that, it's got downforce that really works. But you're still looking at like two to 300 horsepower in a car that can probably handle six to 700 horsepower. Um, yeah, maybe you're not just driving them hard enough. Good point. Um, <laughs> Stan, I'm glad I made you to laugh at least. Yes, I, you know, I'm looking for suggestions. I'd like to get to 50 soon. It'll be a long time, but we are looking for suggestions on what we should do uh, to celebrate 50. I'm still sore from celebrating 40, so we'll have to maybe come up with something that's not as much of a physical challenge. All right, what else? What else? Project Cars Round 2 of the G Challenge starts next week, so if you want to get ahead of the game, you missed out or participated in Round 1, didn't get where you wanted, Round 2 is going to be at Autodromo Nationale. Oh, we got to put our disclaimer up for that one, don't we? Uh, Monza and get yourselves prepared for next week. So go see what you can do. It is the ultimate leaderboard because the prize, the prize is really something. I think I, I think we have another story on the prize. Um, what else? What else? What else? Ah, Race for Glory and First Grid Gameplay Trailer. So I'll play it in the little window. I probably shouldn't play too much. We're going to lose our monetization or get a strike. I love those cars. I love that. That all is looking great. Looking good. Old Camaro into the wall. I didn't see much damage. Do we see much damage there? I didn't see much bumper flying or anything of the sort going on. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is the first Glory trailer, Race for Glory trailer that came out in the UK today. Giving us a, a pretty good look. I mean, up till now we'd see, oh, look, oval. Oval on grid. Is that needed? Is that really needed? Um, Grid. We'll see. We'll see. Patch notes, Cody's blog talking about the version 1.6 of Dirt Rally 2.0, and this is the latest update. Resolved issues, blanks, blank entries, potential exploit for unlimited restarts in my team events, wind AI performance capabilities, updated engine, adjusted headlights, added nighttime, miscellaneous AI visual audio, UI miscellaneous. Didn't see anything there about force feedback. Didn't see anything about steering controls or any of that kind of stuff. But pretty significant patch. You can see there are a lot of things that uh, were addressed in this latest patch. 1.6 for Dirt Rally 2.0. Um, just a heads up. So the brand new F1 eSports series starts. This is going to be including Ferrari this time around. In just over a week's time with Pro Draft. So next week we'll see the Pro Draft. You know, they're always weird about their, their information and news, and I certainly could do a little more digging. I uh, don't know. Like, are certain, I mean, from what I heard, like the so so look, Sonuk brother who was dropped from, I think that was Williams that dropped him. So are teams going to stick with some of their drivers? Are they going to turn some of their drivers into free agents? Um, I don't know. So there's going to be a lot of information in the next week as to far who these pros are going to be. There's Brendan. Um, definitely the biggest eSport, in my opinion, is the F1 series. It's, it's, it's who it's affiliated with. It's who it's sponsorship. And it's the amount of money. You got a half a million dollars on the line this season. Um, and this is the third season. So when we're talking about the bubble uh, of eSport, Keep in mind that each year, three in a row now, the money has gone up, and they've also had time to look back on the previous season to see if it's paying off, so to speak. You saw Brent, uh, uh, Formula One sitting on the sidelines and now getting involved. So these are significant factors for the future of, of our eSport, not so much about the rest. <clears throat> Race Room has done their update. I think we talked about that last show. Included in that update is the FIA WTCR 2019 cars. They are now available. Beautiful screenshot of the lineup of cars. What's that, an alpha mail? That alpha looks cool over there in the red, white, and green. Um, selection of cars, 1682, 55% off right now. That gets you the Cupra TCR, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, Audi RS3, 
Honda Civic TCR, Hyundai i30 TCR, Volkswagen Golf GTI, and the Link and Co. What is the Link and Co? I don't know that. Is that a European model I've never heard of? Um, this, you know what I like? That 16 bucks for the whole pack is pretty cool. Um, I never heard of this this company. You guys help me out here. Lincoln Co. is constructed by Geely Group Motorsport and raced by Cayenne Racing for their inaugural FIA WTCR season with Lincoln Co. The car is powered by a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged. Doesn't tell us who it was made by, though. Did they make the motor? Anyway, um, didn't know much about that. Maybe you guys have information. You can fill me in. 16 bucks, but you're looking at a lot of car models and a lot of car liberties to go along with it. So pretty cool there. Look at the content. Yeah, look at all that. Get a good shot of this one here. There you go. There's the Audi. Nice looking car model. Anyway, um, that is now available. <coughs> now, I kind of said that I wasn't going to talk about Fnatic until they release those darn drivers. Um, I mean, I am just now, where are the drivers? I would like to test this wheel for real. It's right now just a really expensive, really big, really heavy paperweight. I really do want to use that podium wheel, uh, but I want it to be fair. I don't. I just feel like it's not fair to test it still. Um with that said, I was not going to talk about anything fanatic. However, this I can't pass up. And I, I, I do this for you. Despite my feelings, I do this for you. Um, giveaway. So this is just posted two days ago. Giveaway. Two, two times the two Paddock Club passes worth over $10,000. Comment, like, and share this video. The two lucky winners. So they're giving away two of them. And it's going to be two, so two pairs of Paddock Club passes worth over 10K. Two lucky winners will be chosen randomly out of all of our social channels and announced on the 12th of July in the comments below. So go to their Twitter page, like, share, and comment on this video, and you will be entered into what could be a huge, huge Formula One dream. Um... Yeah, is that your dream girl there, Tim? You like SRG? Um, all right, what else? Okay, so Hot Lap Pump Day is not today. It's next week. Hot Lap Pump Day. Hot Lap Pump Day. Rick Motech is always giving us little clues. And so if you want to get ahead of the game, now, again, I've told you guys this a hundred times. I don't know the cars. I don't know the tracks literally until we're about on the air. Um, minutes before. So... What I've learned is they are always giving us little clues, little tiny clues, like, see that little camel? Anytime we can see a camel, camel is our keyword. Camel, camel is is like our our clue, our our, our call sign. Um, anyway, so what do we see here? I see a Pontiac Bush car, Bush Grand National. See the little Bush logo right there? I see, or it could be a Winston Cup. Um, number 27, don't know what significance that is, but it does mention Hot Lap Pump Day, and it is a Pontiac old school NASCAR. That's all I can get from this. However, and this confused me a little bit, but that's part of the game, I guess, on the post that was done the day before yesterday. Anybody remember this movie? If you're my age, you know this movie. This is a classic. Well, obviously, this is a dead giveaway. Hot Lap is coming. Are you ready? Big old camel, which is... Kind of our clue. Tim Richmond car. Was that Tim Richmond? Um, this is our big clue. So I immediately thought, well, the name of this movie, I've given you guys enough time to figure it out. Or, or yeah, I was trying to figure out the track, but I just couldn't confirm. So I was like, well, I don't know anything. And they don't have that old school NASCAR, nothing that old in iRacing at least. But maybe they're switching gears on us and it's not uh, iRacing this week. But... What we're seeing here is the movie Cadillac Man. So are we going to be running in the Cadillac CTSV? I don't know. Um, but that is a clue. And so if you're just trying to get ahead of the game, maybe it's time to dig up some Cadillac setups and get them at the ready for next week and uh, see if um, perhaps <coughs> Pontiac Le Mans. Okay, there you go. But they don't have that car to the best of my knowledge. Um, I gotta check one thing here. 
okay I'm seeing things slightly different on my other screen I was like wait you guys aren't seeing full screen are you uh, McLaren Shadow, Ollie Palkala, giving you a tour around the twists and turns of Silverstone, UK. You know, if there's a hot lap I should watch to get some pointers, it's definitely Silverstone because everybody knows my feelings about Silverstone. Definitely not my favorite track. It's not so much the track that I, I fault. I, I What I don't like is that um, that track makes me look bad. It makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing and that I have no memory for a track. And I think I'm actually... A pretty good uh, at, at learning tracks and remembering and knowing layouts. Uh, so it, it's anyway, but all the Pacala showing you the way around. You'll find that at McLaren Shadow. Okay. JR Motorsports ready to clinch a playoff berth at Chicagoland. So apparently they've had a pretty good year. Uh, JRM Dohar 88 and JRM Keffer 7 have JR Motorsports third in the E NASCAR Heat Pro League standings, but still need to clinch a playoff berth so they're doing some kind of a playoff format for that and i guess it's starting to heat up there article here at autosport and I, I i i read a little bit of it and this is in regards to grid and i think they actually touched upon and maybe they watch our show maybe tom Aragon watch our show and i don't know it um but the tricky balance that could define codemasters grid reboot and Grid's reboot is a welcome boost for motorsport gaming, but its success will be defined by whether its attempt to cater for casual and simulation gamers can avoid being muddled. I completely agree. I completely agree. And I think in talking with Billy and talking with you guys, and things that I've said, my concerns, my fear for Grid is that they've pushed things a little too far towards trying to appeal to the sim racing crowd who, you know what, let's face it, the hardcore sim racing crowd isn't going to love that game no matter what. You know how you get the sim racing crowd to love that game? By giving us Grid, which was a built-for-fun arcade racer that had a good enough feel and a good enough driving experience to appeal to the sim racers when they're looking to have fun. Just like I always say about the game Wreckfest. And there's no reason that Grid should be pulled in a more serious direction. I, I know I'm beating a dead horse. I'm beating a dead camel here on a Wednesday. But I've said it a few times. I've said it a lot of times. I really wish they... I just hope they back down. I hope that the looks are just what we see and that the drive is what we expect. Or the game is what we expect to an extent. Up to them. Can't fault Codemasters. They seem to be making money doing what they do. Um, so we'll let them have that. Race Sim Tools. This looked like a pretty easy telemetry program. Um, Multi-Sim support works with iRacing, Project Cars 2, F1 2019, and a set of course of Competizione. More to come. So that means that you kind of have your all-in-one as well versus like if you're trying to use MoTeC or any of the sophisticated things with iRacing, it gets super duper complicated and difficult. And then you have to learn whatever you're going to use for each and every sim. This one kind of gives you everything. Almost 100 pre-configured graphs to make it easy on you. Console and PC sims are both supported. I don't know how the hell they're doing that. Uh, but you can download it and check it out for yourself. You'll find that at race racingsimtools.com. Just thought that was kind of cool and worth knowing about. Maybe we'll get a chance to test it around here. Do you guys remember the salad bowl we called it? The salad mixing bowl sim? This was the feel three, I think they called it. Um, anyway, this is a whole blog. They did a Kickstart campaign. Remember, this looks much more sophisticated than the original, original one. Oh, it also does ACC. Um, did I miss a question? <laughs> Psycho. Psycho messing. <laughs> yes. Oh, you saw that. Yes, I would. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Psycho, you're a funny guy. You make everybody laugh in our uh, Discord channel. Um, the hardcore sim racers are only happy when they get to yell at a newbie at iRacing. <laughs> well, that's why we need a rec fest, so somewhere we can go where everybody races as a newbie, so to speak. Um... I didn't mean feel VR. Where is feel VR? We did see an update on the pedals, Theodore. Uh, we talked about that last week or maybe the week before. 
and that they were actually completing and I guess shipping out their pedal set, but no word on the wheel. But for any of those out there who thought they'd taken the money and you know run off, run off to Bora Bora and are drinking Mai Tais on the beach with our money, um, apparently they are producing and shipping. So that's that's good news. Good good news for sure. But that definitely delayed. Um, field 3, this is the Virtual Reality Motion Simulator. The original one just looked like a green bowl, uh, like a mixing bowl for salads. Anyway, they did a whole uh, a Kickstarter project. Anyway, they did do a, a project status that is uh, post on the July of 7th and July of 7th? July 7th. Um, but you can see some, uh, some assembly and some prototyping still on, oh, look at, look at the Chinese paper. It's Chinese paper, right? Uh, I wonder if that's because they are <laughs> building these in China or is that shipping paper? But you can see some of the progress of what they're doing and it does look quite serious. Um, anyway, Feel VR, I, or Feel 3, sorry, I keep doing that. Not sure if you guys remember that one or care, but there you go. Moving right along, what else? Uh, the Telegraph had a write, uh, an article that probably would make most of your heads explode. And, and I almost suckered it. Uh, but people who regularly play racing video games are worse drivers, new survey finds. So now, to be fair, even though they're showing an arcadey um, situation right here, um, I, I, I can't imagine they actually... A poll of 1,250 motorists revealed that people who played popular games such as Need for Speed and Forza every day had more accidents and speeding convictions than other drivers. Is that really a surprise? I mean, really? I mean, you could be insulted that, hey, no, 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 no. Now, I would argue that the average eye racer, I don't know, but see, if you drive racing games, you have the need for speed. And I have to confess that I didn't become a responsible driver on the public roads until the day I raced for real. And as soon as I had an opportunity, as soon as I drove on a real track for real, my brain clicked that, wow, you're really, you're really an idiot um, for doing, you're putting everybody, forget your life and how much you value, you're putting everybody else and their children and their parents and their, uh, at risk by driving like that on the public road and I'll just I'll own it I mean until I was 32 years old and I I went to Russell to do driving school and felt a real car on a real track until then I was a dangerous person to be on the road with um and crashed a lot of cars and got a lot of speeding tickets um so I understand the thinking there and and, and I think most people who do play games kind of do have that however Let's face it, this article was focusing on need for speed in Forza. Even though they show a picture using a, a sophisticated wheel, I can only assume they really were talking to more of the gamer side of things. Um, but, I don't know, your thoughts, opinions. Are we better? Are we better drivers? Are we really? Or are we more dangerous? I don't know. I can make an argument for both if I had to. You know, old debate club. You know, if you had to take both sides of the argument, I could argue both sides of this in a courtroom and, and probably sway some people's opinions. Um, Billy, see, that's exactly it. I literally, I drive like three miles an hour over the speed limit on, on ever since I started racing for real. Um, put me in a car. And I will risk it and push it as hard as I possibly can. Put me in a go-kart and I will drive it till it breaks. Um, put me in a regular car. And I mean, like, I, I laugh about my Datsun at this point because I have this car that is so ferocious, such a ferocious beast. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Members of the Sim Pit are better drivers. Everyone else is terrible. And, and my beast is useless. It's absolutely useless to me. I, like, what am I going to do with a car that is that fast? Um, yeah, John says Sim Racing Online has slowed him down offline. I, I think that those who really race seriously 
in sim racing are going to be better drivers in real life. Um, and on the flip side, they still might feel the need for speed. They might be safer drivers, but they might drive fast for the most part. Some maybe are done what I've done, converted, done what uh, 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 what John has done. Um, sounds like I need a better personal car. <laughs> um, no, you know I really don't. I don't. I, I you know I I have my beast of a car. I work from home. I have my brother's car available to me anytime I need. Uh, I thought about buying a new car just for the hell of it, and then I was like, why? I I don't even go anywhere, sad to say. And if I did, my brother's car is the one I like to camp in anyway, being a little hatchback. And if I wanted to do something fun, I would grab the Z. I just feel like it's a liability to the world. Um, all right, enough of that. Is that enough of that? Should we move on or should we stay on this topic? I get... We could talk this topic all day long. I wish I could have you guys involved in an audio chat for this one and just go on and on. Uh, I don't care about this, but Culture of Gaming talking about why do news outlets not take esports seriously. If you're interested, you'll find that at Culture of Gaming. I'm just going to kind of move along. We've gone a little long already today, being that I still have plenty of things to show you. Uh, Starters Orders 7 is the horse racing simulation consoles are not providing. Oh, no. Why aren't they going to console? Anybody want to run a horse sim? I like horse racing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to play a horse sim. Never really been that encouraged to. Um, the other day, I showed that program that changed all the INI files, like all of them, for iRacing, making it very easy to tune things in. And I think that if you have more than enough horsepower, maybe that doesn't apply as much to you as if you're on that that fringe edge of not quite enough. You want to get the most. You really need to get the most out of it. Uh, here is a Dirt Rally 2.0 performance breakdown of most important graphic options and showing what was going on. So they used in this test a, a PNY a GeForce RTX 2060. So it's just a 2060 6 gigabyte card and an i7-5820 processor with 16 gigs of RAM. And you can see how much percentage uh, each of the options were costing in terms of a frame rate drop. So if you, you know, and you know, most of the people I think who watch this show in particular are pretty savvy of our industry, but frame rate is everything. You know, we could talk all day long about force feedback and how great force feedback is or isn't and what it does or doesn't do. However, frame rate is really the first step to performance when it comes to sim racing. When you think, you know, and if you ever get a chance to talk to any alien, anybody who is a top, top ranked racer, they would take a single screen running at 200 frames over triple screens running at 59 or surging. Um, if you're having trouble playing Dirt Rally 2.0, you feel like you're behind the sim, you feel like you're just not performing as well as you could or should be, like you know what you can do, it could be a graphical issue. You might want to check this out. You'll find that at Game Debate Dirt Rally 2.0 Performance Breakdown. Um, what else? Sage Karam on Toronto. I want to go in and show I belong. So this is posted just yesterday. Sage Karam, you know, we could have a whole conversation on Sage Karam. IndyCar racer turned sim racer extraordinaire, turned back into an IndyCar racer via a fill-in ride at Indy 500, and now continuing on for some other races, which means we'll probably not see him in the sim racing world as much. You know, Sage Karam, you, this is one of those guys, you either probably love or hate Sage Karam. He's rubbed some or ruffled some feathers um he's rubbed some paint for sure uh he is definitely one of the people who um different people have different opinions on sage but it's great to see a dedicated sim racer back in the real ranks of racing uh this guy raced with us at lionheart and i'm not sure how many races he'll be doing but he was you know if he was in the race he was either gonna win or crash in a fiery <laughs> explosion. Uh, there was like no second place for Sage Karam. Uh, and I think he takes that mentality to real life racing. And uh, anyway, he's uh, showing, he wants to go in and show that he belongs there. And I'm sure he will be. If he can just be clean, I, he, the guy can drive. The guy can really drive. 
Motorsport.com talking about Robert Wicken's latest step on his long road back to racing. Now, he couldn't be with a better team when it comes to this topic. So Robert Wickens had a horrendous crash, basically has for the most part lost the use of his lower extremities. I've seen him walk. He can walk kind of holding on to something. Um, he's got the ability to move his legs. He's just not functioning. But think of who Schmidt Peterson Motorsports is. Um, this is a team that has extensive uh, knowledge in non-pedal control. Sam Schmidt is in a wheelchair. Sam Schmidt, I've watched him race a sim using a blow straw for gas and braking. Blowing for gas, I believe, and sucking for braking. Using head tracking for steering and competing in an oval race against the other uh, pros of motorsport running on iRacing. Uh, they are now talking about hand controls that might be the next step for Robert Wickens. So don't count him out yet. The team has still not dropped him as a driver. They are dedicated to him as well. Um, so anyway, very cool story there right up at motorsport.com. PC Invasion, talking about the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. They start up July 18th. We talked about that going on, so they're going to have the real deal, the big deal going on there as well. Um, could be fun racing. Could be cool. For, it could be, though, discipline for some of you guys. I know a lot of you guys play Euro Truck. Maybe racing the trucks is where you're going to want to uh, be, but July 18th, we'll be able to play that more. Anybody else get me word on that? Do they really spray water on the brakes of a European F, uh, racing truck? Because to me, like the thought of a scorching, hard, glowing metal brake, maybe they're not metal, maybe it's carbon, maybe carbon doesn't explode, but even anything, but massive heat change doesn't always go well. Do they really inject water onto the brakes of those trucks? Because you do in this game. You lose your braking power, and you have to spray them. <coughs> Love to know if that's real. I could look it up, I guess. I could probably just... Uh... All right, Pro Sim, have a good one, buddy. Okay, so Speedway Digest talking about Jim Beaver Esport becoming the latest eNASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series team. And I don't want to take away anything from Jim Beaver. And Jim Beaver, uh, they they are known, I believe. He has a, 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 a radio show. They do, I believe they do some roundy round racing, uh, some like uh, uh, <coughs> dirt racing. And I think they do some trophy truck stuff. Um, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whole thinking of this e nascar p free series and and like i just still go back to you know you had teams in place in the sim racing world that had maybe they needed to be given opportunities instead of pushed to the side because now what we see in the e nascar now in f1 2019 i i can't say what i'm about to say because you're talking about the real team that is ferrari that is mclaren you know those are the real teams associated with and it's only the real teams there are no other teams now in the case of the e nascar you have a few that are real nascar teams paralleling what they've done with formula one but then they have all these other teams like you know so you have wood brothers joe gibbs jr motorsports roush front fenway then you got Flipside Tactics, G2 Esport, Renegade Beaver, um, and they're like these other weirdo teams, but we threw away the existing NASCAR teams that have been there for a decade in order to pave the way for Jim Beaver Esport team. I mean, I applaud them on being another team. I applaud that series on its growth. I want the best for all of it, but I'm still just sort of like, Really? This this is weird. This is weird to me. I'm just going to say it. it's weird. So we talked about the world's fastest gamer. We talked about the competition going on. We talked about the Project Cars Week 2, Round 2 for going on. 
we talked about this year being a real life ride with Aston Martin. A real life ride. The biggest prize ever for if you're really into racing, cash is king, sure. But a real life ride, man, in some ways that's cooler because you get that cash and your mom's going to be like, oh, you should buy a house or you should put it away or your wife's going to spend it or who knows. But real life ride, they can't ever take away from you. You know, that that's embedded in your brain for the rest of it, all of eternity. But what I didn't realize, and the only reason I say it is because, man, I can't think of anything I'd rather do on planet Earth. I really, if there's anything I could do, it would be riding in a car in the Daytona 24. That's the one. Like, that is the king of all. If I could have any glory, any moment in racing that I could do for real life, and luckily this is one that's probably more obtainable than most. It just requires winning the lottery, but... It would be driving in the Daytona 24. And that Aston team participates in it. So whoever wins World's Fastest Game or Season 2 is going to be racing in the Daytona 24 hour in an Aston Martin for real. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it does blow me away. Um, w, uh, uh, WCS League. So a buddy of mine sent this in. Where racing is entertaining. The $1,000 knockout by WS, WCS League. Sign-ups are live. We talked about this last week. There is money on the line. This is going to be that level of money. Uh, Avid Chronic Racing is affiliated with it. Sim News TV is affiliated with it and broadcasting the events. Running in R Factor, Studio 397 is involved with it as well. Kind of a different approach to eSport. And this is something that like Billy and I were talking about and talk about often. But... This is not going to attract the Brendan Lay. This is not going to attract the Gregor Hutus. At $1,000, you can pretty much count on the big boys not being able to take time out of their schedule to come get it. But how would you like to win that kind of money? It might be at the level where people who apply, people who really want to win, who are going to put in the work, could have a shot at winning some prize money in the thousand dollar knockout so anyway you can find that at their uh facebook page in addition to that they do have a website you'll find that at wcsleague.co.uk and find out all the information of how it plays out how to get involved all right we'll talk about a few rigs then we'll move on uh first one here look at this death movie i even love where it's being built right next to that's a 240 sx right I think that's a modified body kit, 240 like kind of drifted out, 240SX. And he's building a totally custom-built Deathmobile. I applaud that. Very nicely done with a Recaro seat. Is that a Recaro? That looks like a Recaro. Yep. Nope, Sparco. With a nice Sparco seat on it, so doing it nicely. Uh, in addition to that, we got this one. This guy's excited. This is by uh, Foggy Sheep Chief. It has begun. Sim Labs came through. So you can see the very first steps, building it in his very crowded room. Um, but a Sim Labs rig on the way. Somebody excited about that. I'm excited for him. In addition to that, we've got, uh, oh gosh, I can't read that one. Schiaparelli Racers. Schiaparelli Racers. Selling his race car when he moved to Singapore hurt, but this helps. So he's got a total D-Box looking type setup. Not sure if it's actually a D-Box. It looks like a D-Box. Uh, Fanatic Gear. Ah, he's doing uh, right-hand drive. You can see the shifters on the left side. And I'm assuming he's running in VR because I see the monitors off to the side. And I see some, looks like the, the, play, the, the Vive control. Aren't those the Vive controllers on top of the computer back there in the back? But nice looking rig. And... What's that box? Is that a power supply? That looks like a power converter. If I had to guess, he's switched from 110 to 220 or 220 to 110. That looks like a power converter there behind it. That could just be the power supply for the D-Box or the motion platform. SFX100. Thank you, Theodore. Yeah, I thought that it looked ish, but not the same. And let's see here. Uh, Thawman, is this yours? The way you posted this one different, I almost thought this was your rig. But uh, Imger had a post, not my first real rig, and showing the construction process. I call that the ladder design, the heart, the base, the soul. 
of a uh, deathmobile is building that ladder on the bottom whether you box it in or not is just sort of more of aesthetics like he just kind of did the minimalistic version but in the end by the time you paint it up and finish it it looks pretty darn good well done and then lastly actually i have two more things this i saw this john hill sent this in as well this is an enormous flight simulator installed in a tokyo hotel so you rent this hotel room look that's a total hotel room bed there's a total hotel room de chair and table and i guess you can rent this room and drive this fly this elaborate simulator while you're there that's kind of an interesting concept to uh, sim arcade instead of just going there putting a quarter in and playing for a minute instead of playing 20 bucks and getting 15 minutes you could rent the room for the whole night and play to your heart's content anyway would you do that for a full-blown sim what if it was one of those like mclaren motion sims like elaborate curved screens you could rent the room for the whole night 24 hours of sim driving would that be a dream vacation for you not sure might work for me it might work for me and then lastly so i have been doing the next level racing stands and the last one was the next level racing wheel stand direct drive and the big question i mean direct drive a wheel stand a wheel stand built for a direct drive wheel we put not only my sim experience direct drive wheel on it which you know that's gonna test a wheel stand a lot that's not only a heavy wheel but it's a lot of strength as well in addition to that I went with my rick motec pedals using a very very strong hydraulic pedal so i mean you're gonna put the word dd on it I'm going to test you at that level. Like if if you have a DD wheel, well, then I got strong pedals too. So, of course, the first problem is, sure, maybe it can handle it. Maybe it is wiggle-free. Maybe it's even flex-free. But how in the heck is my, sh my chair going to stay there? When I press on that pedal, I'm just going to go flying off if I'm on roller wheels like a desk chair. Or even if you're on four sticks, like on a, on a, on a, four sticks, four legs like at a kitchen table, you're still going to push back. Well... Here was my answer. What you can see there are two old belts, and luckily they're the same size. Put one around one side, put one around the other, and put it on both legs. And what do you know? This The chair stayed still. Now, I will say it still wanted to pitch me back, but I wasn't moving, and I could always overcome that leaning back that it was doing. But uh, that rig is strong, strong enough to push me off of it, and that was the first thing I had to solve just trying to use it. But it seems like... It is strong enough for a DD. We'll get a full review on that and the wheel stand racer, which is a totally lightweight, definitely wouldn't work with a DD wheel, but it could be perfect for most starters or people just pulling something up in front of the couch. We'll have both of those in uh, the near future. And in addition to that, we'll be here on Friday with Billy Strange for Beyond the Sim. But that is going to do it for today. Be sure to subscribe to this show. Be sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed what we're doing. Be sure to thumbs down if you think we stink. That's okay. Just be sure to interact. Have a comment if you like. And uh, have a great day. Enjoy Hump Day. We'll be back next week. We'll be Hot Lap Hump Day at uh, in the afternoon. But today we will just get out there and keep testing products and getting reviews going. That's going to do it for this one. Have a great day. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole. And I'll see you on the track.